are listening to the What the Wrestling Podcast, a show that brings you all things wrestling with your host, RJD. You already know what time it is. Perfect. A E D. Two hundred. Dynamite two hundred. Damn, it's been two hundred of these already. Sheesh. We can clap it up for that. We can clap it up for that. We like dynamite. But first things first, before we get into all of that, AEW 200, let's hit the like button, like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel, what's the wrestling, let's get into it right now, let's not waste any more time, let's go. Yes, 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 yes. Tis I, RJD here. Welcome to What the Wrestling. I once again am your host. And this is not supposed to be this color, but it's all good because we course correct while we are in the air. Let's get that mustard up in there. Oh, there she is. Uh, that's orange. We don't want orange. <laughs> there we go. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's having themselves a good old night. It is, I, I'll say October 3rd, you hear me? Stupid. It is August 3rd, 2023. This is your AEW review for August 2nd, 2023. AEW Dynamite is back and better than ever. Killing the game. Back with a good show. A lot of story progression going on here. A lot of good stuff you can sink your teeth into, and that is what we like about AEW. But first things first, hit the like button, like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let us not waste any more time. You will see the ticker going across your screen, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and the Twitter, SoundCloud, and Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Look out for all of that now. Let us talk about AE Dub Dynamite 200th episode. We had a long, we had a lot going on. We had a lot of good wrestling. A lot of good. Uh, I don't know what's going on with AEW, but they seem to be, you know, besides the blood and the blood and guts, we've been doing a lot of death matches recently. God damn. <laughs> Every time you see, it's like John Moxley I went to WWE and said, "You know what? You know what, Vince? I want to do some death matches. What do you think, buddy?" And Vince was like, "Get the fuck out of here!" So John Moxley took his ball, went to AEW. Now he can do death matches. <laughs> That's what it seems like. But shout out to Moxley, man. But anyway, Chris Jericho, Kudnowski. Tick Kesta versus Daniel Garcia and Sammy Guevara. First things first, the end came where Takeshto had a lion tamer. Well, Daniel Garcia had the dragon tamer on, Chris Jericho, but Don Callis whacked him over the damn head with Floyd, the baseball bat, and they got the win. Don Callis said, I guess you have joined the J, the Don Callis family. And Jericho was like, you know what? Nope. I wasn't feeling the way I won that. But you know what? It is what it is. And Jericho got the win with Takeshita. After the match, they said there was going to be a JAS family meeting. Mandatory meeting. And you better be there. Uh, shout out to Daddy Magic, man. I know Daddy Magic is animated, and he's like, you know what makes Daddy Magic's nipples hard? But when he actually has a regular promo, 
and he's just talking. He's very intense, man. He's very good at what he does. I all it's like listen, 2.0, we're good at NXT. And then they come to AEW and they've done nothing but be valuable and have good matches and like these guys are solid brothers, man. I, NXT, like when they revamped anything, just didn't know what to do with these guys. Love these guys. But I love the story, the Don Countess family. This was like a story driven show, the 200th episode. A lot going on, a lot of story progression. And that's all, that's all we could hope for. But the story progression is great because now he's joined the family. You got a mandatory meeting next week. I love it. I love everything that they're doing here. I love Daniel Garcia and Sammy Guevara. They make a very good tag team. You know, Garcia with his hip thrusting out of nowhere. And and Sammy Guevara is about to have a baby. So, shout out to these two. And Sammy Guevara is excellent at what he does. So, young brothers. uh, With this JAS feud going on. With this little mini feud they have with Jericho leaving them. Uh, listen, they may be inclined for a run soon. We'll see. But like I said, Nate Parker talking to Jericho before you can say anything. Daddy Magic and Matt Menard wrote up to him and said next week there would be a mandatory meeting. And that is probably where he decisively splits from the JAS. Tony Schiavone brings out Jack Perry. Jack Perry tells Lynn to get out there and take his ass kicking like a man. He says that with all the plates screws in his neck, there's no way he can be cleared to get back in the ring. But just so happened that a good friend of his who wrestled in the ECW, who still wrestles today. So what do you say? And out comes Rob Van Dam. Surprise, motherfucker. And RVD comes out. And they have a nice little, a nice little moment. Uh... Jack Perry tries to come back with a chair after (laughs) he tries to get at RVD, but RVD ducks it and almost takes his head off with a rolling soul butt. Jack ran away and literally hid behind a child in a crowd. He was basically like, fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. He got the hell out of there and called it a day. Now, I don't know what they're going to do with this. Rob Van Dam and... What they do with this Rob Van Dam stuff. I don't know if I want to see Rob Van Dam wrestle at all in with Jack Perry. I didn't ask for that. I don't think I need that. Maybe for Dynamite and they have a little thing. That's fine. AEW does well with the legends. But I don't want to see this at all in. I would love to see this on Dynamite. Just build it up there. But... If this leads to a match between these two at All In, to me, that's a waste of a spot. Mr. Mox, Mr. Penta, and Mr. Trent Beretta, and then Anything Goes match, which is basically a death match. Surprise, motherfucker. Because you got John Moxley, so you know somebody's going to be bleeding at the end of this. And this was as crazy as you thought it would be. We had... (laughs) So let's pick it up here. Trent, ble- uh, Trent bleeding, set up a table on the floor. Penta goes up. John gets behind him, uh, grinds the barbed wire on his face, and then Trent Beretta pops up a barbed wire two by four. Trent Beretta pops up and hits him with a suplex through the table onto the floor, and that was just before commercial break. These guys are crazy. Stop it. Get some help. Uh, Penta hit Mox with a couple of super kicks and a super kick for Trent setting up a table. He went to go up top, but he got cut off. They all jockey in for position. Moxley gets to his feet and there's an avalanche flip power driver through a table. These guys are crazy. After that, Mox puts Penta through a table with the shoulder block. Penta grasping and dragging himself to his feet. John dumps out. John John Moxley dumps out some thumbtacks. They fight back and forth, and Moxley power drives him into the thumb 
into the thumbtacks for a near fall. An ace crusher onto the tacks for Trent. That had to suck. And Beretta hits a hits the double uh, the dude buster into the tax in return. But Penta breaks it up with a trash can shot to the forehead. And by then, stupid, I'm just like, what the hell am I watching? So we had a three way strike battle in the middle. Uh, four arm for four arm. They go off the ropes. They springboard into a kick. John snaps off a DDT, but Trent lands the knee, and Trent, rep, uh, Trent Beretta wins with the Bruce Psycho knee onto Penta as Mr. Mox got dumped on the outside. After the match, Claudio and Wheeler Yuta make their way down to the ring, but are met by Chucky T and the Orange One, Orange Cassidy. They continue to brawl. Blackpool Combat Club get the better of the best friends, but Trent puts himself into the cross into the fray with a cross body chuck blasts a chair into claudio's face and sends him out the way and then orange punch on john moxley taylor uh chucky t gets the mic and says look looks like i didn't accomplish a goddamn thing so friday on rampage he wants to finish this in the parking lot and then they continue to show us parking lot fights especially the one with santana and ortiz shout out to those guys where the hell have they been and listen we got ourselves a parking lot fight these parking lot fights in AEW are always good so i'm looking forward to seeing some craziness people going through some car windshields and if you got john moxley in the match you know somebody's gonna be bleeding damn son so i'm looking forward to that Next, we have Renee interviewing Rob Van Dam. Then he says Jack Perry is running his mouth. And next week, he's going to challenge him for the FTW championship. And then if he wins the title, to uh, he'll inflate the value to ridiculous levels and then retire it. But it depends on how much fun he has wrestling Jungle Jerk next week. Out comes MJF. And he says, listen, he's a little emotional. He asks the crowd to bear with him because he wants to have a heart-to-heart -heart with everybody. And you know some of them have attention deficit disorder. <laughs> and he's like, including rejection, sensitive dysphoria, which is when you have trouble managing feelings of rejection and they get blown out of proportion. He talks about being bullied through his life and goes into all of that. And he learns to stab everyone in the back to protect himself. And to be honest, being a scumbag is easy. Getting booze is easy. You know what's hard? Being vulnerable. He knew that if he opened himself up to getting booed, it would uh, to getting booed, it would kill him. It would take him right back to being the kid who had quarters thrown at him, but he's not scared anymore. Let me stop right here. MJF is very good at being. <laughs> it's like MJF. You know he's full of crap. You know he's full of shit. You know it. But it's like so compelling, even though he's still full of shit. It's awesome. Awesome stuff. MJF says, somebody taught him to be cool. And the person says, listen, you could be a scumbag. And he's still a scumbag. Don't get it wrong. He's still an asshole. <laughs> Perfect. But he's ready to be our scumbag. And it's all thanks to the person who told him to be vulnerable, and that is Adam Cole, baby. So Adam Cole comes out, and he comes down, and Cole puts MJF over and says, You know what, man? You've matured. You've gotten a lot better. You used to be a back. I used to be a backstabber, but I learned there's another way. There's another way, Max. There's people who love and adore him and want to cheer for him, and that's because he's so damn good. It's because they know deep down in his heart, and so, there's a good guy in there. There is a good guy in there. Get the fuck out of here! I wanted to laugh at this point. So he wants to make sure Max knows he's incredibly proud of him and so are the fans. Freeman says he has, uh, he's enjoyed this verbal fellatio that he's getting, but that's not why he called him out here. He called him out there because he promised him a title match after their tag match win, lose, a draw. But he's decided Cole, but he's decided Cole doesn't deserve a match. Everyone is mad at Max for this, but you knew something was coming. 
But Adam says, uh, saying Adam doesn't deserve a match. He deserves the match. The big at the biggest show in history in front of the biggest crowd, Wembley Stadium, all in. Perfect. There's no one he'd rather make history with than Adam Cole, and he passes him the contract. Adam signs it and tells Max he loves him. Friedman reciprocates and they hug. MJF says, to be honest, MJF says he has to be honest. He's going to win. They'll have some good natured banter about it and post and, uh, and post it on the turnbuckles. And we don't know what the hell is in that contract. Stupid. Roderick Strong is backstage and he's mad. He's throwing a whole hissy fit. And that was the end of that. Stop it. Get some help. But the thing with this is, he just signed the contract. He didn't look at it. He could have had a match like, you have to have one hand tied behind your back. We don't know what's in that contract. MJF is a slime ball after all. But I am so looking forward to seeing this as the main event all in. We still don't have a goddamn match card. Stupid. But we do got a main event. So I'm looking forward to this. MJF and Adam Cole, they're too hot. They're selling too much merch. People are buying the t-shirts. And people don't want this to end. People really want to cheer MJF. People love Adam Cole. But people really want to cheer MJF. And these two are so good <laughs> as a pair on the mic. With all these damn skits and vignettes and shit. They, sh they should make more skits and vignettes. I would have gave them the goddamn tag titles. Even if it was for a couple of weeks. And then they could have lost them at All In. Then had another main event at All Out. But All Out might be the CM Punk MJF main event. So we'll see. <clears throat> even though it's a goddamn week later. But. And then Cole could go off and fight Roderick Strong. Because that's probably where the split happens. But. To be honest. They could have gave them the titles. These two, uh, I don't want this to end either. They should run with this until it begins to cool off a little bit because it's still hot. You chant double clothesline, everybody wants to see that. Then we had Jay Lethal, Jeff Jarrett, and Segnum Singh versus the Elite. This is basically the Elite have come back. The Elite have come back and signed new contracts, everybody. Dom DeMarco. All Elite Wrestling, and they're staying right where they are. So this was basically, hey, we signed the new contract, and we're going to kick some people's asses. Great. So they win with uh, Sangnam Singh almost got hit with the V-Trigger, but they came in. Karen Jarrett came and busted it up. Brandon, Brandon Cutler hit her with the mist. Then he got beat up by, uh, what's the little one's name? Sanjay Dutt. Sanjay pulled him out. The Hardys came out and beat him up. Kenny Omega, V trigger to Jay Lethal. Uh, v trigger to Jay Lethal and One Winged Angel. See you later. Thanks for coming. Then the Elite says they ain't going nowhere. They're right here. So tonight, Dynamite 200, they're happy to be here. And here's to the next 200. Omega says, whether it be Dynamite, Ring of Honor, Rampage, heck, even Collision, you'll be seeing even more of them. But for now, goodbye. Mwah. I bid you adieu and good night, bang. Now, what does this mean? What does this mean? This means we might get ourselves CM Punk versus Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega said he's down to do business. I think Kenny Omega said he'll do the business. CM Punk said he'll do the business. You can main event a pay-per-view with this. Or you can main event a... Nah, you got to put that on pay-per-view. Fuck that. You can, you can put this on pay-per-view. I don't know if this will make it to the next pay-per-view, CM Punk and Omega, but you could at least make this for a big show, maybe Grand Slam. Uh, you can make this for Grand Slam. You can make this for, I don't know when they're running back to New York, but Kenny Omega and him saying collision, you could tell he's going to be there. Now, I would love for them, for them to have CM, FTR versus the Elite. But they probably ain't going to do it. Remember, CM Punk's problems are with the Bucks. It wasn't really with Omega. Omega just came in to help his people. And, you know, you're going to ride for your people. They in a fight, you in a fight. So 
I really think that's what he came. That's when he went back there for and that whole backstage crap brawl out. But I think that they will be doing business at some point in time. FTR and the Elite have been going back and forth forever. So they fought plenty of times. But now that you add Kenny and Hangman in the mix, yeah, I, I think... I don't know when, but it's coming. It is coming. So next we had uh, the Mogul MC promo and AR Fox makes his point. He says they were close. Why didn't Darby give him a phone call? I just want my phone call, Darby. I just want my phone call. How dare you? How dare you not call me, Darby? Man, you sound like a little... Bruh. I'm mad because Darby didn't give me a phone call. Man, if you don't shut the hell up. Next, we had footage of Strickland and Fox going to Nick Wayne's backyard in the garage gym. I mean, he's got he's legit got a wrestling gym in his garage, it looks like. Shout out to Nick Wayne. And he's like, what the hell are you doing here? And... <laughs> Strickland and Fox beat the holy hell out of Nick Wayne and all his friends, bloody him up, and then they call <laughs> Mr. Darby, and he says, listen, man, you see how quick, quick a phone call happens? Just like AR Fox. Why don't you just give him a phone call, man? That's all he wanted. And then Nick Wayne is sitting there, bloody as all hell, and he says, this is only the beginning. And then Swerve Strickland hangs up the phone, tosses it behind himself, and Nick Wayne is left bloody with his friends in the garage in their the Nick Wayne Academy, I think that's what he calls it. I love this, man. Don DeMarco for this. This was stone. Matter of fact, give me a hell yeah. I said give me a hell yeah. This was this was on point, man. These brothers beat the crap out of him and now Darby's going to be extra upset you further the storyline between Swerve and Darby and everybody wins because this is going to be great so I'm very much looking forward to seeing where this story goes and Nick Wayne already got killed Darby and uh, Darby and Swerve got more things to handle storyline progression can't go wrong there Asi Open fights El Vikingo and Commander. Asi Open got the win by pinfall to retain the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships. Keep it a buck with you. I don't know why these Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships are on this show, Dynamite, when they could have been on Ring of Honor. I understand you want to get people on the show. If that was the case, put this on Rampage. This spot could have went to somebody else. Now, listen, I love I Can Go. I love I See Open. And I love Commander. But why do we have Ring of Honor tag belts on AEW Dynamite? We don't even got the AEW tag belts on AEW Dynamite. That could have went to that spot. So, didn't agree with this placement here. They could have put this on Rampage and called it. It had the same match on Rampage. And it would have been just as good. So, All Good by Kingo is amazing. Commander, amazing. Aussie Open, very good. Nothing wrong here. I just wanted to put this on this show. So, let's hit the... Nope. Then we had Hakaru Shida versus Tony Storm. Extra, extra, extra shenanigans in this match. The Outcasts, I feel sorry for them because they had, they had momentum... And then it kind of just got squashed. Then you had uh, this girl got hurt. And she might be out for the rest of the goddamn year. Uh, Jamie Hayter. Jamie Hayter got herself over. We love Jamie Hayter. They're supposed to go with her and Britt Baker. And now then you had Tony Storm in there. Now Sheeta's in there. Tony Storm is about to go shoot something. Liv Morgan and Charlotte might be shooting with her. So shout out to all of them. For getting acting gigs, if this is true. Uh, maybe that's why she dropped the title tonight. But they had themselves a good world championship match. 
So back from commercial break, we had a hypotech blocked. We had a, a waist lock, uh, waist lock applied. German suplex connect connects. We had the corner knee whip across. Uh, another knee by Hakaru. She goes up for more mounted punches, but we had a Meteora into a deep folding press. Two count, setting up Tony up top. Tony knocks her down and gets the running hip attack and a DDT, but a kick out by Sheeta. We had four arms. Sheeta lands a knee and the Falcon Arrow for a two count. A cover Sheeta was about to hit her with the kendo stick, and Tony said, let's go. Do it. Tony Storm hit her with the... <laughs> but instead she knocked the holy hell out of ruby soho and out of soraya and <laughs> so sucks to be them and after she hit the both of them uh referee turned her back to dispose of the kendo stick but she got hit with a goddamn with the mist because she's oscar out there now she got hit with the spray can of green spray paint and Tony Storm hit the power driver, the Storm Zero, for a two count. She went to go do it again, but it was reversed by Sheeta. And Sheeta basically had her in the reversal stacked Shawn Michaels over, what was it, Bret Hart, the Bret Hart British Bulldog pin. One of those, she hit her with the, the roll up pin, the victory roll. There you go. <laughs> Stupid. She hit it with the victory roll to become the new women's world champion. And Sheeta celebrates with confetti raining down. I am happy for Sheeta because the last time Sheeta held the title, there was no fans. So that sucked. So now she gets to have herself a proper title reign with proper fans. Happy for her. She's going to kill it. And that, my friends, is your AEW Dynamite. So stay tuned. Tomorrow we got news on Vince. I will be putting that video up tomorrow. News on Vince McMahon and will he be subpoenaed to testify? Is he back in trouble with the law? Wait, did Vince just have back surgery? We got a lot going on. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. So look out for that. SmackDown review on Saturday. SmackDown comes out tomorrow. I might review it tomorrow night. If uh, if I'm up to it, we'll see. Okay. Normally, I wait till Saturday, but I might review it tomorrow. And then, you know, collision review on Sunday. So we got a packed, packed, packed weekend. Not as packed as last week, but still a packed weekend ahead. So I bid you do, and everybody be safe. I am out. I'll let y'all. Peace. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm.